Today we're going to build two beginner Python projects. First we're going to build a digital clock that displays the current time. Then we're going to do the same on an analog clock and we'll update the current time in that. I will be explaining step by step on what needs to be done and by the end of this video you'll be capable of building your own Python project. So let's not waste any more time and get started. First make sure to have Python installed in your machine. You can download this from the official Python website. I'll be putting the download link in the description below. You can make sure that your installation is correct by opening up command prompt and typing python dash dash version. As you can see, I'm using the version 3.8.6. Next we need to install PyCharm IDE. You can download and install PyCharm from here. Again, I'll be putting the link in the description. Once the installation is complete, you can open up PyCharm and start working. I have a folder in my C drive called Python Beginner Projects. Let's open up this folder in PyCharm. You can see on the left hand side that the folder has been loaded by PyCharm. Also it has automatically created a python file main.py which is a template python file. We don't really need this so let's go ahead and delete it for now. Now we are going to create a new python file called digital clock in the python beginner projects folder. For creating GUI in Python, we can use the tkinder module. So let's import the tkinder module and we're going to write import tkinder as UI. This means that the module tkinder can be referred as UI in the rest of this Python script. Whenever we call on UI in the script, we're basically calling the tkinder module. Our requirement as we saw earlier was to create a window where we'll be displaying a text which is the time. To create a new window in Python we need to make an instance of the tk class in tkinder. So ui.tk will give us the instance of that window and we'll assign it to a variable called window. Let's try to run this program uh, by right clicking and selecting run digital clock.py and we can see that nothing really happened. The window that we tried to create just didn't show up. For this we need to call window.main loop. This function basically tells the Python program that all the code related to the window is coming between the creation of the window and the call to the main loop function. Let's run this again and now we can see a blank window. If you remember our requirement, we are trying to build a digital clock. It's basically a window with a text inside and this text needs to be the current time and it needs to be updated every second as well. So far we have a blank window. Next we need to create a label inside our window. For that we are about to make an instance of the label class in tkinder. We simply say digital clock label equals UI dot label. When we're creating an instance of the label, we can pass in a few information. First is the window that this belongs to, then the text that will be displayed. For now, let's just give it like this. And we have more optional parameters to the label class, which we can get to later. If we run this now, we can see that the label is not yet visible in our window. For that to work, we need to call the pack function of the label instance. So we call digital clock label dot pack. Now let's run this and we can see that the label is now displayed. But the text is too small and kind of hard to read. We probably also need a different font. To apply this, we can pass the font parameter while creating the label instance. Let's try giving Helvetica 72 bold. Helvetica here is the font name, 72 is the font size and bold is just the font style. Make sure to play around with these details to fit your need. But let's just run this for now. And yep, now we can see a pretty big display of time. As a next step, let's update the static text that we have given with the current time. For this, we'll need to import the time module. We can use this time module to get the current time. The idea that we're going to use is to get the current time and update our static text label and we need to make this update every single second. Let's go ahead and create a function called update underscore clock. Here we can fetch the current hours, minutes and seconds from the time module. We can simply pass in the correct format codes to get the current hours or minutes or seconds and whether we are in AM or PM. Percentage i will be giving us the current hour in a 12 hour system. 
Similarly, we can use format codes percentage %m for minutes and percentage %s for seconds. Percentage lowercase p can be used to get am or pm. Now let's construct a single string by concatenating all of these details and let's call it time text. Next, we need to update the digital clock label with the time text that we've constructed. We can do that using digital clock labels config function and pass the updated text as the text parameter. Here we can see the current time when we run the program. However, we want the label to be updated every second. To do this, we need to call a function called after in the label instance like this. This line here means that after 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second, we will be calling the update clock function. So in effect, we will be calling our update clock function every single second. And there we have it, our Python digital clock. Next, we'll try to make this clock into an analog one. So we can go ahead and take a copy of the digital clock.py and rename it as analog clock.py. For the analog clock, we are going to use an image that I've already created in Photoshop. You can see it right here. It's having a size of 400 by 400. So this is the image that we'll use for our clock dial. And you can use whichever image you want as long as the width and the height of the image are the same. In the code, the first thing we'll do is to set the size of the window. Let's define window.geometry and give 400 by 400. We're not going to need our digital clock anymore, so let's go ahead and delete it. Remember that we just need to delete the label. The code that fetches the current time information can be reused for this project as well. Let's run it to make sure that it works. So yeah, the digital clock is now removed. Next, we're going to create a canvas. Whenever we want to draw things in Python, we need to create a canvas. And we're going to make a canvas of size 400 by 400. And I'm going to set the background as black. You can play around with these parameters if you want. Now we can load our clock dial image using tkinder's photo image class like this. And pass the argument file name of the image file. I have the clock dial image in the same location as the Python file. Next, we have to call the canvas.create image and pass the x and y coordinates, which should be the midpoint of the image. The image size is 400 by 400, so the midpoint should be at 200, 200. And that's what we'll give here. And finally, the image itself that we created as an instance of the tkinder's photo image needs to be passed in as the image. Run this now and you can see our custom clock dial image as the background. Before we go on to the next part, let's create some variables center x and center y, which will be the midpoint of the clock, length of each hands of the clock. We'll define these values that we'll be using to draw each of the hands onto our clock. Now the biggest question is, how do we code a solution for moving a second's hand along our analog clock? As a start, let's draw a second's hand onto our clock. We can do this using the create line method in the canvas. The line always connects two endpoints. So the first four parameters of the create line method are the x and y coordinates of the first endpoint and then the x and y coordinates of our second endpoint. First would be the center of the clock and let's give the second as 295, 295. Then we can give the width and the color fill for our line. In case of seconds, we'll just give red. Let's run this and we can see our seconds hand. For this next part, we're going to need to use some math. But stay with me. A second's hand is basically a line joining the center of the clock and some point in this particular circle. Radius of the circle will be the length of the second's hand represented by this orange line. Imagine that your clock is centered at origin, which is 0, 0, which just means that the x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is also 0. Now let's say the length of the second's hand is r, which is the radius of the circle. Remember that the first endpoint of the second's hand line will always be at 0, 0, which is the origin. We need to calculate the other endpoint of this line. We know that this is somewhere in our circle. Before finding this point, let's establish the angle that each position of the second's hand will make. We can say that the 12 o'clock has angle 0 degrees. When the second's hand points to 3, it means that it is at 90 degrees. 
at 6 we have 180 degrees 9 means 270 degrees and 12 means 360 degrees which can also be said as 0 degrees the seconds hand needs to move 360 degrees to complete 60 seconds using that information we can calculate that it will take 360 divided by 60 degrees for completing one second that means that the seconds hand will have to move six degrees every second let's say we have moved an arbitrary angle t at some second we need to find the point x y so that we can draw our seconds hand joining the zero zero and x y let's try to draw a perpendicular from y axis to the circle where the seconds hand meets now we have a right angled triangle Let's try to calculate the cosine of angle T in radians. Cosine of radians of T is adjacent side by hypotenuse, which is Y divided by R, which is the radius. So to find Y, we can basically take R times cosine of T. If we calculate sine of T, we'll be getting X equals R times sine of T. Now we have a nice looking formula for our X and Y. We need to make one more adjustment here. In a standard coordinate system, the value of x increases to the right and the value of y increases upwards. When we are drawing something in a computer, this is a bit different. x still does increase to the right like the standard system, but y increases downwards instead of upwards. To handle this scenario, we can reverse the sign of our formula to find y. So now we have x equals r times sine of t and y equals minus r times cosine of t. We reverse the sine of y. Now all we need to do is to code our solution. Let's set the minutes and hours hand as well. Generally we set seconds hand as thin and long, minutes hand is thicker than the seconds hand, and hours hand is the thickest and the shortest. Next we'll need to set the angle of the clock hands based on the current time. So let's go back to our update clock method and convert all our time variables to integers because they are currently strings. We can delete the variables am or pm and time text because we are not going to need them for our analog clock. For moving the seconds hand along the clockwise direction in a clock, we need to change the ending coordinates which is currently at 295, 295. But we do have our formula for finding this x and y coordinates. We will define the x and y coordinates for seconds hand as seconds x and seconds y. Remember that x equals r times sine t, where r is the length of the second hand, which is the second hand length that we have already defined. t is the angle in radians. In case of seconds, we have the seconds coming from our time module, and we'll simply multiply that by 6 because we need to move 6 radians every single second. We need to put our angle inside math.radians, which will be passed into the math.sine function because we need to convert degrees to radians before using it in a sine function. Ultimately, we need to also add the center x to the x coordinate and center y to the y coordinate because the clock's origin is not exactly at 0, 0, but 200, 200. Now we can call the canvas.quartz function where we can pass the updated endpoints of our line. So first we'll pass in our line object, seconds hand, followed by the x, y coordinates of the center of the clock, which is center x and center y. Then we'll pass the other endpoint of the line, which we just calculated as seconds x and seconds y. To update the coordinates every second, we simply call window.after and pass 1000 milliseconds, which is one second, and also the function that is to be called which is update clock again. Remember that previously we called the after function on the label when we created the digital clock, but it works for the window as well. When we run this, we can see that our seconds hand is working fine. However, the minutes hand and the hours hand will not work as expected. So we need to do a similar implementation for minutes and hours hand. We'll define minutes x, minutes y, and use the same formula to achieve the similar implementation as the seconds hand. We'll do the same for the hours hand, but remember that in the case of hours, we need to multiply hours by 30 instead of six. This is because we are dividing 360 degrees 12 times for setting the hours. 360 by 12 is 30. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you tried this project, definitely let me know in the comments as well, because that'll just make me happier. I'll be back again with more videos, so see you soon.